Hello and welcome to Top Linux Tech. In today's video, we'll see an example of an email application available for mobile devices that can potentially violate your privacy. Now, when I say potentially violate your privacy, I mean that the organization behind this email application has the technology that could allow them access to your login credentials and email messages in extraordinary cases. Otherwise, this technology is used for email delivery optimization and synchronization. Me, as a privacy-minded individual, I'll always choose not to use an application that has access to my username, password, and email messages every time I send and receive them. Anyway, before we dive into this video and see this email application in action behind the scenes, I'd also like to talk a little bit about how email technology works and why some email applications can be a privacy concern. Now, here in this slide, we have the usual email technology setup. We have a client, which is our computer, tablet, or mobile device running some email application like Thunderbird, Outlook, or Webmail, and then we have the email servers responsible for sending and receiving our emails. So, what happens when you want to send somebody an email message? Well, in a usual and normal case scenario, right after you click or tap the send button, your email client will connect to an SMTP server over port 465 or 587 and leave an envelope message ready to be sent to the destination email address or mailbox. This SMTP server is acting like your local post service and initiates a connection over port 25 to the destination email server, which in turn is responsible for storing your email messages until you decide to read them. This can be either POP or an IMAP server such as gmail.com, for example, which is in direct communication with your email client and allows you to download, synchronize, or read your received email messages. The SMTP and the IMAP can be separate servers or just one server acting as both sender and receiver, but it doesn't really matter because this is how the email technology works in a nutshell. Now, there are cases with some email clients where the communication between you and the final destination is performed through an intermediate server that acts as a mediator or a bridge between you and the original email server. This means that the intermediate server will relay the authentication data, meaning login credentials such as your username and password, and also it will relay the email message to the destination server for you. Now, this is exactly like asking somebody else to deliver an unsealed mail envelope for you. And, of course, that someone can peek inside the envelope and see what is inside if they wanted to. So, why would you have an extra intermediate server which handles the email between you and the server, rather than connecting directly from an email client to a server responsible for its own job? Well, we'll talk about it right in a moment, but first, let's introduce the mobile email client here that is in question. You've probably maybe guessed it by now, and that is the Outlook mobile application. It is available for Android and iOS and also supports a variety of email services and technologies out of the box because it is a very modern email client. Now, to answer the question from earlier about why would some email apps use their own intermediate servers is because of technologies like push notifications that allows email messages to be pushed to your device without having for the native email application to check for incoming message on every 15 minutes. Now, this is good because it saves more of your battery life on your mobile device. And then there is also the email deliverability issue. With a service like Microsoft backing this up, who is also a giant in the email domain, it is clear that in 99% of the cases, your emails should be delivered to the desired destination. The disadvantage or the privacy concern for these applications is that 
all email communication data will be relayed and routed through an email server that can potentially read your emails if necessary. Now, I understand that this might be the case if you are using Microsoft Email Services or Microsoft Exchange, for example, in combination with some modern Active Directory authentication mechanisms. However, in my demonstration here, I am using none of the sort, but rather my own private email server, and this application should not behave like this when connecting to other email servers other than Microsoft. So, let's quickly jump to my computer here and see this mobile application in action. Now, as you can see, I have already established a secure shell connection to my private server. So, what I'm about to do next is simply create a brand new email account that I'll use for testing and this demonstration. So, I'll run my control panel here and choose to add a new user account. I'll simply call it Top Linux Tech, choose OK. And I'll make sure that it has a super secure password. Let's also verify that. OK, so far so good. But before I do anything else, I'm quickly going to log in to my webmail client to make sure that everything's fine with the new account. So yeah, everything seems to be working perfectly fine. However, I'm not going to use the webmail client for this demonstration, but rather the Outlook mobile app that I have just downloaded from the Google Play Store on my Android device. So now that I have just opened Outlook on my mobile device, I'm simply going to tap here on Get Started and provide my email account details that I have just created on my private server. Now, of course, this is not a Google or a Microsoft account, so I'll have to choose Setup Account manually and provide further details about my email server, which is both mail transfer and mail delivery agent running Postfix and Dovecot. OK, the application is attempting to log in to my server. And there we go. That seemed to went through just fine. No, I don't want to add another account. And of course, we're going to get some self-boosting advertisements telling us how good this email app is. Well, we'll see. So let's tap on Compose New Email Message and I'll simply send a test email to myself. Just going to put testing123 in the subject. And in the message body, I'm just going to say hello there. Smiley face, of course. And click on send. Now let's quickly switch to my email server where I am actively monitoring my network connections and email logs and see what is happening behind the scenes. And there we go. A new connection has been established. My email account has successfully sent a message to my email server originating from this IP address that you see here highlighted on the screen. We also see that the same IP address has established a connection against my email server to both the IMAP and the SMTP service on port 993 and 587. Now, I am aware that this IP address does not originate from my mobile device, so I am really, really curious right now to find out where is this IP address coming and connecting from. Now, before I run a background check against this IP address, I'm simply going to quickly log back in to my webmail client and see if the message has been delivered successfully. And yeah, there's the message right there in the inbox. So everything seems all right. And let's now run that background check on that IP address and see where exactly it's coming from. Let's now see first if there are any reverse DNS records associated with this IP address.
Not really. However, the authority for this IP address belongs to Azure DNS from Microsoft. And yeah, I'm not surprised, just as I expected. Of course, this is going to be a server that belongs to Microsoft. But let's just perform some other background checks against this IP and maybe see the entire network block. So I'll simply navigate to iplocation.net and run a search against this IP address. And as we see here, this server is located in Ireland and yeah, it belongs to Microsoft Corporation. Let's also navigate to ping.eu and examine the full network block range. And sure, this whole network of IP address ranges belongs and it is leased to Microsoft Corporation. Now I'm really sure that this server belongs to Microsoft and it is performing and relaying the email authentication and email message sending for me against my email server. Which is something that I do not like at all. So I think I'm simply going to delete this email account that is currently enabled on the Outlook mobile application on my Android device. So yeah, delete account from all mobile devices, tap delete, and there we go. Let's now quickly switch back to my server and see the remaining of the network connections. And yeah, it seems that even though I have deleted my account, there is still an established and ongoing connection between my server and the Microsoft server. Now, I really don't like this behavior, so what I'm about to do next is simply block the entire Microsoft network range from establishing any kind of connection against my server inside my firewall. So let's run IP tables, and I'm going to use the top of the input chain to add those IP ranges, and I'll simply set it to drop connections from these IP addresses. Let's also examine the firewall statistics in real time and let's see what's going on right now. Okay, nothing seems to be happening. And yeah, the connection seems to have been dropped and it is now in its final waiting state. Now, this means that it is simply going to disappear and never going to be re-established again. This is it, people. I'll simply leave the judgment to you to decide whether this convenience poses some kind of a privacy risk or it is simply a commodity and you do not care. It's up to you to decide. Me personally, I'll never run a service like this. And for the most part, I don't like having email or cloud accounts on public cloud services. And you know who they are. I am very, very happy with my private email, cloud, and VPN server, and that is how it's going to be always. Generally speaking, my dear people, right now we live in those times when privacy concerns are at an alarming peak. We get bombarded with ads, our online activity is being monitored, our personal data is being collected, and then it is being used for profits or sold to other interested parties. And you know this to be true. You've seen it, you've heard about it, and you are living it right now. The moment when you exchange privacy for convenience, you lose part of your dignity. Some people say, well, you know, that's okay, I've got nothing to hide. Ha! <laughs> well, it's not about hiding anything, my friend. It's precisely about your dignity and not being treated like a product. This is why I choose Linux, I choose free software, and I choose to run secure digital services, and I think that you should do the same. If you are interested more about this, 
then please stay tuned to this channel and I will show you plenty of ways of how your digital self can become a lot more independent. I would also appreciate if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment in the section down below or maybe ask me anything you might want to know. Anyway, this is Top Linux Tech, I am signing out and I wish you all well.